Hi guys, uh, welcome back. I hope you're having a good week because I am not. <laughs> um, so I'm currently sat in my MX-5, but I should be sat in my buddy Dom's Renault Megane RS 250 Cup. But a couple of days ago, I blew it up. Well, maybe I, it blew up while I was driving it. Racing driver excuse. Either way, I feel terrible. And uh, yeah, first of all, shout out to my buddy of Dom, whose car it is, because uh, not only has he been super cool about all of this and the fact that it's in bits, literally there's bits hanging out of it. Um, he's the one that, I, that suggested I make this video, so shout out to him. So just to put all this into context, about two weeks ago, uh, my buddy Dom, who I went to the Nürburgring with in October, in said Renault again, said that he was going away for a week and did I want to borrow it because um, I was still on the insurance for it and fly around in it, have fun with it, do some content on it, um, just enjoy it, which I said 100%, thank you very much, that's super generous of you. I went and picked it up on the Friday or the Saturday. I'd literally been driving it around for about a day. I'd made a load of notes on it already for what I was gonna put in my video. On the Sunday afternoon, I think, my boy wanted running up to the farm because they've got like a mountain bike of course thing up there. His mountain bike was already up there, although you probably nearly fit a mountain bike in the back of it because it's quite big. And for some reason, I'd grabbed a camera because I thought, I haven't done any filming in the car yet. Grab a camera, get his reaction. He's probably the worst person to try and film and get a reaction because he's been on track with me. Uh, we do speedies on the road. He's not really phased by anything. But I thought, I'll grab a camera anyway. We'll talk about the car for a bit. It's about five, ten minutes away from a house. We got near there. Everything was up to temperature. It's got a kind of cool layout and it tells you all the oil temperature, intake temperatures, all that sort of stuff. I could tell it was all up to temps. So I said, like, we'll give it, give it a bit of beans. So we passed where I would normally go into the farm onto a bit of road that I know really, really well. It's a nice, fast, open, wide flowing bit of road. Oh, seven, get, it the, get it in the turbo. So you're like, Whoa. Giving it some beans, gone round the right hand corner fairly speedily. It was wet or damp or wet, I can't remember, but I, it, it, this thing's got so much grip, honestly, it's mega. Done the right hand corner, dropped kind of down the hill, we get, start getting round the left, and the left then opens up onto a straight. I started winding, winding the throttle open, I'm kind of, at the point I'm straightening the wheel, I'm like kind of max, max throttle, revs are building, max boost, and then, disaster. Almighty bang, something, looking back at the footage now, I didn't hear it at the time, went into the orbit. First time I looked at, the, looked at the footage, I thought it was the revs, I'm still not 100% sure. It sounded terrible, I immediately looked in the mirror, you see from the footage, I looked in the mirror, because I thought I was going to see bits of engine in the road. My boy proper had kittens, he was not <laughs> sure what to make of it all. I immediately dipped the clutch. First thing I thought was to dip the clutch. My second thought was immediately turn the camera off, which is a bit random. I don't know whether I thought, I felt really guilty that I've been caught in the act doing something wrong, I don't know. So I immediately dipped the clutch, reached for the camera, thought the engine had died. Now I'm coasting, I've looked it into neutral. I've coasted around the right hand corner and I looked down because all the like, load of lights and stuff have come on at the dash, which is why I thought, oh, the engine stopped. Then I realized the engine was actually just ticking over. At which point I've then hit the button and stopped it and, and, turned, the, and turned the engine off. Carried on coasting, because I'm on a bit of single carriageway in the middle of nowhere. I've coasted for about a mile, because I was going quite quick. <laughs> Pulled off into a junction. At which point I then jumped out, looked underneath, and there's oil pouring out. And I'm like, oh no, this is game over. Obviously, like the first day of being trusted with my buddy Dom's car, I felt absolutely terrible. So my first phone call was to uh, my dad, because I'm literally like five minutes away from his house, saying uh, I'm off the <laughs> I'm not off the road. I said I've broken down. Um, can you come and uh, get me? Because he's got a Land Cruiser and trailer. But he actually bought a tow rope. I said it is towable. I think I've coasted a long way, but I think it's fine. So, uh, and then the next 
um, a portal call was to um, Dom because I couldn't find the tow and I. So I hunted around for the tow and I, looked in the back, looked everywhere. He then said, oh, it's in the glove box because um, we left it in there from when we were at the Nürburgring. And then obviously I, ex I, <laughs> I then continued to explain all of what had happened. He said, look, don't worry about it. Honestly, I said, I wasn't doing anything silly. I wasn't trying to do like first, second, third gear burnouts with a handbrake up or anything like that. Um, I said, literally, I was just accelerating out of a corner. I wasn't driving Miss Daisy, um, but no worse than he drives it, no worse than we drive it around the Nerby or anything like that. I wasn't going mad. Everything was up to temperature. And he said, look, seriously, don't worry about it. So I got it recovered to the farm and then tried to look and see what, what I'd done. So I looked underneath again, oil still dribbling out of it but not bad pretty much all the oil had, had dumped out while i was waiting for my dad um at the side of the road we're just on the grass verge so there's no oil in the road anyone that's moaning about that is literally all off to the side in the grass verge put my torch on my camera and started videoing because i could see loads of oil if you look down inside the engine i could see loads of oil but i couldn't really see what was going on put my camera whilst filming in inside the like where the noise and that was coming from and kind of moved it around so that I could then, then look at the footage and I realised that the it looked like the drive shaft has snapped and the end of the drive shaft that was in the gearbox has then come out of the gearbox so the spline bit if I put some footage on the screen now you can see there's oil everywhere which is obviously what has come out of the gearbox the bit that attaches to the wheel has then got then a, like a shaft and a knuckle on it the knuckles then split into two and the other bit of the from the, from the knuckle that then goes towards the gearbox there's a spline bit and the spline bit is supposed to be in the gearbox and that shaft in the gearbox has got some seals and stuff on it and that is what holds all the gearbox all in so at that point i was then slightly relieved and then i thought oh all it is is a drive shaft i mean still not great but then i was then thinking what else has happened as the drive shaft has been ejecting itself while i was doing about the speed limit obviously the banging and clonking and stuff it, the bit that's still attached to the wheel you've then got the shaft and the knuckle that's then flinging around oh that wasn't good Ooh. has that damaged something else has that hit the part of the engine has it hit the taken the sump out i, I know like as drive shafts and and uh, prop shafts eject themselves they take all manner of other stuff out so has that damaged something else my main worry is that when i look went and look back at the footage at the point when the drive shaft let go you can hear something just rev to the orbit and my worry was that i'd buzz the engine Whoa, and then i've killed the engine looking back at it again several times and then over a couple of days kind of thinking and mulling over it in my head you can only buzz an engine when the wheels are pushing the engine like if you go from like fifth to fourth but you go to second and and put loads and loads of um force through into the engine from the wheels then you're going to buzz an engine but it was under its own steam i was only on the throttle so at which point in my head it's the same as just dipping the clutch and then the revs it would have just bounced off the limiter i've watched the footage quite a few times and it's so noisy when it happens i can't hear that bouncing off the limiter but i, I can hear something go really really high and go and go sort of like really whizzing it sounds like it's about twenty thousand revs and i think that might be something in the gearbox but i don't really know so i don't know if that's the the other end of the drive shaft once it's snapped off the bit that's attached to the wheel is doing wheel who's doing road speed and the bit that should be in the gearbox that's now not suddenly under load it's not pushing the wheel then that like spins to a million miles an hour i don't know bottom line is i don't know what i've done to it dom is being super cool he's just like don't worry it's under warranty it's going to get repaired in the next couple of days it will be going off to somewhere and they are going to have a look at it now i'm praying the best case scenario they put a drive shaft in it put some gearbox oil in it fire it straight up and it goes worst case scenario i've buzzed the engine or as it's rattling around it's taken something else out i don't know in the meantime, I've also Googled McGann and drive shaft failure, and there seem to be several people with McGann's. One guy's got th got through three left-hand drive shaft on a McGann. 
and what they say is when you're it's more common on lowered McGann's these this age of this um, model of McGann when they're lowered it does something to the angle or the geometry or something of the drive shafts and there's a spacer that you can put in which we have bought so when it goes off um, when they put the new drive shaft in I think they're going to fit this spacer as well and I'm not 100% sure where the spacer goes the spacer looks like it's the same size that goes over the spline bit so I don't know if it goes gearbox end or wheel end because I'm guessing as you'd lower the car slightly where your wishbones should be like that and they go out that widens the track does that slightly pull the drive shaft out of the gearbox I don't know am I overthinking it maybe I don't I'm not a like a super expert so i'm kind of guessing and trying to work out what it is that's going going on but they, we bought this spacer they do make the spacer and um, it's come from uh ksec racing which is also ironically where this car came from but maybe they didn't make this spacers when they um done all the mods on this car but so yeah watch this space dom's hoping to get the car back within the next couple of weeks um i think they said they're working on it next week once they get a drive shaft and stuff and then hoping that it's just a drive shaft and it's back on the road in which case i'll follow this up with another video and hopefully follow it up with the review that i've written down and got planned yeah in the meantime we'll pray that that's all it is um watch this space and for like subscribe uh, all that sort of stuff also if you've got them again and you're watching this and you've had something similar or you know someone that's got them again and had uh, drive shaft issues is it just a case of the drive shaft's gone and everything else is fine or has it damaged something else i don't know so um let me know in the comments stay tuned and uh i'll see you in a bit <laughs>